All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I'm going to show you how you can use mycelium plugs to make your own mushroom growing logs. Fruits, vegetables and flowers are the most common things that we tend to grow in our gardens, but it is just as easy to grow your own fantastic edible mushrooms at a fraction of the price of buying sweaty old ones from the supermarket. The most popular mushroom variety sold in supermarkets is Agaricus bisporus, which is your bog standard white mushroom, and these are grown at enormous mushroom farms with super strict environmental controls to avoid contamination, and they can produce reliable crops all year round. Recently, in the UK at least, more diverse ranges of mushrooms have been going on sale in supermarkets we've got varieties like shiitake and oyster and lion's mane which all have their own unique flavors and uses and in terms of nutrition mushrooms are absolutely fantastic because your standard white mushroom contains over 90 percent of water which means they barely contain any sugars or fats and they're super low calorie as well and despite this they're absolutely packed with b vitamins and micronutrients and they can also be full of vitamin d which is increased by exposing them to uv light and that even works after they've been picked and this makes adding mushrooms to your diet extremely beneficial if you live in a grim country like the UK where we barely get any vitamin D from the sun at all. One of the most unusual things about mushrooms is that they can just apparently turn up out of nowhere, even just overnight. And it's actually quite a bit misleading really since the mushroom is just the fruit and the actual fungal organism is living below the surface and it lives there long before and long after the mushrooms come and go as a web of mycelium. Now I could make a whole video about the mycelial web that lives on and in the soil and how it was living there long before plants and animals turned up on earth so i'm not going to go into all of that today and of course i can't talk about mushrooms without making the point to say don't eat any mushrooms that you find unless you absolutely 100 percent know what kind of mushroom it is and there isn't an identifying feature that indicates whether mushrooms might be poisonous or not so a lot of toxic mushrooms can look similar to safe ones so again either go looking for mushrooms with an expert or at the very least learn how to identify them properly just like plants mushrooms produce their own range of secondary metabolites and these can be fatally toxic or hallucinogenic and there's mushrooms with antibiotic and antiviral compounds or even bioluminescent glowing mushrooms there's likely a mushroom foraging group or an organization in your area so if it is something that you're interested in keep an eye out for their meetings so let's have a look at the mushroom dial plugs that I've got to start off today and get them growing Here's everything that you need to grow your own mushroom log. I've got three packs of dowels which have been pre-cultured with mycelium. So in total I've got 60 shiitake plugs and 30 oyster plugs. I've also got some natural wax for sealing the plugs in once they're inside the log. I've got this little poofy wax spreader, a 9 or 10 millimeter drill bit and then a hammer or something hard for smacking in the dowels and then a stove or a heat source for melting your sealing wax. When we look at the plugs close up, you can see the white fluffy appearance of the mushroom mycelium, which is living on the wood content of the plugs. These are good for around four months in the fridge, so you don't even have to use them straight away. Now that we've seen the plugs, let's have a look at the log. Here we go, this is the log that I'll be using for my shiitake plugs. It's important when you're choosing your mushroom log that you do pick one that's been freshly cut, maybe up to a maximum of six weeks. And this is just because you don't want to have um, already had a fungus move in, which will outcompete your mushroom mycelium for nutrients and space in the log. First thing to do is remove any branches from your log and make sure it's free of any muck. And make sure to use a log that's a good size like this one and it's important that it still has its bark intact just to protect the growing environment inside. All you need to do is drill the holes into your log leaving around 10 to 15 centimeters between each one. Uh, that's up to around six inches for our Imperial friends. Open your bag of dowel plugs once you're ready to knock them in and don't be tempted to open them before you need them as they'll either dry out or get infected with mold or something and you don't want that growing in there. Tap a plug into each hole using your hammer or whatever you've got to knock them in with until they're flush with the surface of the log and you need to be in contact with the surrounding wood of the log just to make sure that the mycelium can spread into the log. 
Next up, we need to seal over the plugs, and this works just like putting a plaster on a cut, really. You don't want any other infections getting in through the holes that you've drilled, as these are compete with the mushroom culture for the resources in the decaying log. So by sealing the plugs in with the wax, it keeps your mushrooms free to use the nutrients inside the log for their healthy development. Melt your wax block in an old pan, and then use a poofy spreader just like this one to coat each hole with melted wax, and just make sure it completely covers the plug. And there we go, now we have a nicely inoculated mushroom log. Now I'm going to be wrapping this in some black plastic. Um, you can use cling film, is that what you call saran wrap in America? Or is that just a, a brand of cling film over there? I don't know, but you know what I'm on about. Or you, if you don't have any plastic wrap, you can use a regular bin bag like this. And again, that's a trash bag to my international viewers. Absolutely aware of how much Northern English slang that I use for things. And it doesn't necessarily make sense to international viewers or even probably British viewers, I don't know. So I'll try and provide a nice translation where I can. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from and whether I say anything confusing because I know around 60 to 70 percent of you in the USA so I try to make these relevant to as many people as possible and it'd be interesting to know where you are in the world as well so if there's anything I can do to make my videos more accessible to you let me know. And there we go, that's nicely wrapped up now. This needs to go somewhere shaded and damp, and I've got the perfect place to the tunnel zone. <laughs> Looks like a body. I'm gonna leave this in here now for the next six months before I unwrap it ready to fruit. The mushrooms should be ready to grow in the autumn, but they can take six to 18 months to actually start fruiting. So if they don't turn up in the autumn this year, I'll rewrap it until the spring next year. And then once your log starts fruiting, you'll get mushrooms returning a couple of times a year for maybe three to five years, depending on the size of the log and how long it takes to rot. You can do one of these or you can do a load and stack them up and then keep them damp with a hose or a watering can to keep them humid and damp throughout the initial incubation. And then especially when they're fruiting as they'll need plenty of moisture to create some fat mushrooms. I can maintain a warm and humid environment at this end of the tunnel all year round, but you can store your logs maybe at the bottom of the garden under some trees or under a bush or under some netting or something. Just keep them out of the direct sunlight. And the important thing with all of this is to make sure that your log doesn't dry out because that would almost certainly be the end of your mycelium culture in the summer I'll most likely move this somewhere a bit cooler like to the back of the allotments under the trees as it'll get pretty hot in here but for now it's just going to be perfectly fine well that's all there is to it and hopefully you'll fancy giving mushroom growing a go for yourself and I absolutely promise that the difference between the mushrooms that you grow yourself and the ones that you get in the supermarket will be absolutely massive. Of all the things you can grow in the garden that are better than the shop bought ones, I'd say that it's probably mushrooms that lose the freshness the fastest so literally picking them and eating them the same day were the best mushrooms you've ever eaten. If you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see the results of this mushroom log in the autumn. I upload a new video every Tuesday with tons of guides and projects projects to get growing your own food. I'll see you next time.